Hey kiddos. So remember the first week I mentioned a list of big words and I promised that we would be breaking them down. Well, this week we are going to start with the first steps in Bible study, observation. When we hear the word observation, we normally would assume we were looking at something with our eyes. <clears throat> but we actually can observe with all five of our senses. Have you ever read from a storybook and felt like you were there in person? Seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling, or tasting in the same manner as the character of the story? For an example, let's look at a story in the Bible. Genesis 3 tells us that Eve was in the Garden of Eden when she saw the forbidden tree, and it was a true delight to her eyes. Could you picture this scene in your mind? Could you smell the aroma of the flowers in the garden? The story continues as Eve takes the fruit and eats. Could you hear the crunch of an apple or even taste the sweetness? This passage goes on to tell us that Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the um, garden in the cool of the day and they hid from him. Could you hear the urgency of God's steps and feel the uneasiness of Adam and Eve as if you were there? Well, we just used all of our senses to help us observe and break down this passage. Now, the books of the Bible are written like letters. They were breathed out by God, written by prophets with a purpose to reach a specific audience. And let me give you an example. So after the Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt, they camped out around Mount Sinai. Thunder, lightning, a thick cloud, and the sound of trumpets signaled God's presence. Moses met with God and then delivered the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel. These commandments were intended to guide and protect the people of Israel. Now I'm going to leave you with just a few words of encouragement for this week. As you begin to read through your Bible, you may find some passages are harder to understand and require you to be a detective and dig just a little bit deeper. But remember, we can always talk to God through prayer and ask Him to use the Holy Spirit to show us the meaning of His Word. <clears throat> so our activities for this week, our weekly challenge, we're going to do pen pals. How fun, guys! So what, what's going to happen is we have matched you with a pen pal. And you're going to be receiving the name of that person. And this week, you're going to write a letter to them. You're going to seal it in an envelope and you're going to send it to that person. It can be words of encouragement. It can be a story, whatever you want to send. And for our little guys, if you want to draw a picture and send it to your pen pal, um, that is wonderful. I think that they would love to see whatever creation um, you can come up with. So the second way to engage this week through activity is our scripture reading. This week we want you to read through Acts 1, 8. In our storybook reading, we love Jesus and we want to learn more and more about him. So be sure to catch this week's Jesus storybook reading. And remember when you're listening to that story to use your five senses and observe what's going on in the story. Now, for our creative challenge this week, we're going to do a, a five senses blindfold challenge. So you're going to grab a blindfold. Your parents are going to collect some household items. They're going to put them in a can and close it up. And you're going to be blindfolded. And you're going to see if you can guess what they put um, in, that, in that can or in that box with a blindfold on. So the only rule is that you cannot look. Okay, so you have to use your other five senses besides seeing to figure out what is in that box. And then last, make sure you complete those sermon notes um, that we have posted. And you guys have been doing a great job, I'm sure, of listening to the sermons and then going back and kind of reflecting on that with your parents. So <clears throat> you guys have a great, great week. And... Don't forget our series challenge, and so remember to continue practicing those books of the Bible um, and work on memorizing them in order, okay? I hope to see you soon. Take care, guys. Hi, everyone. It's Miss Brianna, and today I'm going to be reading to you out of the Jesus Storybook Bible. I'm going to be reading The Terrible Lie, Adam and Eve Lose Everything from Genesis 3. 
Adam and Eve lived happily together in their beautiful new home, and everything was perfect, for a while, until the day when everything went wrong. God had a horrible enemy. His name was Satan. Satan had once been the most beautiful angel, but he didn't want to just be an angel. He wanted to be God. He grew proud and evil and full of hate, and God had to send him out of heaven. Satan was seething with anger and looking for a way to hurt God. He wanted to stop God's plan. Stop this love story right here. So he disguised himself as a snake and waited in the garden. Now God had given Adam and Eve only one rule. Don't eat the fruit on that tree, God told them, because if you do, you'll think you know everything. You'll stop trusting me, and then death and sadness and tears will come. You see, God knew if they ate the fruit, they would think they didn't need him, and they would try to make themselves happy without him. But God knew there was no such thing as happiness without him, and life without him wouldn't be life at all. As soon as the snake saw his chance, he slithered silently up to Eve. Does God really love you? The serpent whispered. If he does, why won't he let you eat the nice, juicy, delicious fruit? Poor you. Perhaps God doesn't want you to be happy. The snake's words hissed into her ears and sunk deep into her heart like poison. Does God love me? Eve wondered. Suddenly, she didn't know anymore. Just trust me, the serpent whispered. You don't need God. One small taste, that's all. And you'll be happier than you could ever dream. Eve picked the fruit and ate some. And Adam ate some too. And a terrible lie came into the world. It would never leave. It would live on in every human heart, whispering to every one of God's children. God doesn't love me. And it wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. A dove flew from Adam's hand, a deer darted into a thicket. It was as if they were frightened by something. A chill was in the air, something strange was happening. They had always been naked, but now they felt naked and wrong, and they didn't want anyone to see them, so they hid. Later that evening, as God was taking his walk, he called to them, children? Usually Adam and Eve loved to hear God's voice and would run to him, but this time, they ran away from him and hid in the shadows. Where are you, God called. Hiding, Adam said. We're afraid of you. Did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat, God asked them. Adam said, Eve made me do it. What have you done, God asked. Eve said, the serpent made me do it. And terrible pain came into God's heart. His children hadn't just broken the one rule. They had broken God's heart. They had broken their wonderful relationship with him. And now he knew everything else would break. God's creation would start to unravel and come undone and go wrong. From now on, everything would die, even though it was all supposed to last forever. You see, sin had come into God's perfect world and it would never leave. God's children would be always running away from him and hiding in the dark. Their hearts would break now and never work properly again. God couldn't let his children live forever not in such pain, not without him. There was only one way to protect them. You will have to leave the garden now, God told his children, his eyes filling with tears. This is no longer your true home. It's not the place for you anymore. But before they left the garden, God made clothes for his children to cover them. He gently clothed them and he sent them away on a long, long journey out of the garden and out of their home. Well, in any other story, it would all be over, and that would have been the end. But not in this story. God loved his children too much to let the story end there. Even though he knew he would suffer, God had a plan, a magnificent dream. One day, he would get his children back. One day, he would make the world their perfect home again. And one day, he would wipe away every tear from their eyes. You see, no matter what, in spite of everything, God would love his children with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And though they would forget him and run from him deep in their hearts, God's children would miss him always and long for him. Lost children yearning for their home. Before they left the garden, God whispered a promise to Adam and Eve. It will not always be so. I will come to rescue you. And when I do, I'm going to do battle against the snake. I'll get rid of the sin and the dark and the sadness you let in here. I'm coming back for you. And he would, one day, 
God himself would come. I hope you all have a wonderful week.